This is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM WSKB Westfield. Welcome back to Art Speed, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Auerbach. Peter Coles is our chief engineer today, and we have two guests from the Majestic Theater, the artistic director, Danny Eaton, and playwright, Stan Freeman, who wrote the play called The Pitch, which had its world premiere, directed by Danny Eaton, at the Majestic earlier this year. I was very lucky to get to one of the first performances. I did a review of it for Pioneer Valley Radio, and basically it's the story of two sports writers, one a veteran, one a young up-and-coming one, who are trying to get the story on a baseball player who got to the majors through one pitch and his career ended. Uh, The play had developed a lot of interest. There was a lot of good word of mouth on it. And unfortunately, this pandemic got in the way and the play ended performances early in its run. But first of all, good morning, Danny and Stan. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Um, how are you guys doing? Hang in there. Hey, yeah. Hi, um, Stan. How are you doing, Danny? Great, great. Thanks. It's it's great having you back here. And I've got to say that we recorded a program with you all and the two leading actors in, in the production. And there was a technical glitch that went wrong. And most of the program had to be ditched and salvaged. But um, it when we talked to you the last time, you were about three weeks into rehearsal with maybe a week or two to go before the first performances. And I know that the play got a lot of great word of mouth and um, a, a lot of uh, activity at the box office. Uh, what When you folded the play, which you had no choice in doing, um, you said at that time that you wanted to bring the play back. So what's the status of it at this point? Do you think you'll be able to reopen in the fall and bring the play back, or um, will you have to wait longer than that? Uh, it'll be a, a little bit longer than that. We actually have uh, developed a reopening plan, and uh, that will take us, to uh, January 9th, which is sort of the official reopening date. And what our uh, hope is, is that we will uh, simply pick up exactly where we left off with the pitch. The the set is still on stage. We haven't touched that. And all the props and so forth are, are backstage. And, you know, the actors are uh, ready and, and willing to go. So, you know, the plan is to pick up just where we left off with the pitch and finished the the final three and a half weeks of the run. How much time will it take to rehearse to bring it back to performance status? I just anticipate a week. I mean, I've been thinking about that with every show that's on hiatus, how long it will take to bring it back. Uh, You know, everything from the Broadway plays to uh, other shows. Uh, Do do the actors rehearse via Zoom in the interim, or uh, would they forget their lines? How How do you cohesively bring it back to performance level? Well, I think, you know, um, the... You know, part of part of the issue will be with with the union, with equity, uh, for sure. I mean, actually, ec- equity has uh, control over all of this because you know they are they're doing their due diligence as as a as a union, and they will not um, allow any of their members to go back to work uh, under any circumstance until they say okay. It's, it's good to go back to work. So uh, the January 9th date is something that we plan, but, you know, that depending upon equity, that may not hold, or they may say, uh, you know, theaters can open up in, in December. Don't know. But uh, in terms of the rehearsal, you know, when, as we get closer to that ninth, uh, January 9th date and, and, we have sort of a clearer picture of what the union is going to do. Now I'll get back in touch with the cast, and you know we'll see what we need to do to, to get it back up on its feet. But you know I think it'll be uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, do you hope to bring the same cast back, or would you have to uh, recast it? No, the same cast. Okay. And they're all anxious to to finish out the run. 
I can imagine. Stan, um, when, yeah. when you finally saw your play on stage, <clears throat> directed and performed, first of all, how many times did you see it before the show had to close? Well, I think it ran uh, 14 or 15 times. I think I saw four or five of them. And, um, yeah, so four or five I, I saw, as and, a including play, uh, opening night. As a know. playwright, what was it like seeing your work done on stage? Because this was a world premiere. Mm -hmm. um, did it play out the way you thought it would? Did it uh, exceed your expectations? Did you Were you surprised by any of it? Well, exceeded my expectations. Um, well, I'll just tell you about the opening night. First, you know, I went to a number of the rehearsals beforehand, and... Um, and opening night, you're, obviously you're interested in the play going well and all the actors getting their lines right and the drama's good and things. But you're also very attuned, much, I was much more attuned than I thought I would be, on the audience reaction. And we got laughs and things that I didn't really think would get laughs. And, uh, you know, and the climactic scene, there was actually a gasp in the audience. And so it was very uh, thrilling. I spent 30 years as a newspaper reporter, and generally, you come in, you write your story, you pick up the paper the next door, you see this, you see the story in the paper, and you don't have a very much contact with the readers. But theater is something completely different, and uh, it thrilled me a lot more than I thought it would to see the great reaction of the audience and to hear comments as, as we were walking in. I stood with Danny, and people uh, had comments about it, and. Uh, and then, of course, there were the reviews, which were very good, and um, so it was. It was really more thrilling than I could have anticipated, say, six months beforehand. Yeah, I, I. One of the things I have to tell you is, I mean, having talked with both of you and the actors beforehand, and then seeing it, I did not realize that it was a thriller and had a surprise ending. That that part of it took me by surprise, but I thought the ending. Uh, people around me, you, could, you knew the audience, uh, it, it, at least where I was seated, they were so into it uh, yeah. that uh, they, it was as though you gripped their attention. There wasn't a, a, a playbill that moved, there wasn't a, a gum chewer there, everybody was just wrapped. Um, that mm -hmm. surprised me. Right. Well, you know, the, the script did part of that, but the acting, John Hagen, the lead act, and the lead part, and Julian Finley in the second lead, and Steve Pierce as the baseball player, they were just so good that it added, you know, it doubled the value of what, whatever the script had. And, uh, and Danny's direction, he just made great choices on how to, how to stage scenes, and uh, but there were flashback scenes that he just did terrifically well, and so all of that added up to a, you know, a much more dramatic, uh, play and humorous play than I thought it would, than I thought it would be. Both of you gentlemen had alluded to the fact when we talked initially that you hoped there would be life for the pitch after the majestic run and there had been talk about um, performing it in a couple of other venues down the road. Is that still your plan? Uh, yes it is and uh, we had, had lined up four theaters uh, when the, Maj the majestic ran run ended, we had four theaters lined up over the uh, spring and early and summer, uh, and then the virus hit, but all the theaters, uh, they understood why we had to cancel, because everyone had to cancel, and but they all welcomed us back and invited us back once this ends, so, you know, we're just paying attention to the majestic run, and after that's over, we have our little portable set, and the actors just love to play, and they want to do it, and so we're, you know, ready to go once... Uh, the world is back to, to a little bit of normalcy. That's great because I think it's a play that would uh, do well in other locations, it, uh, it w whether they're small theaters or whether they're larger ones. Stan, do you have any idea of whether you would rewrite it or uh, revise it in any way prior to um, taking it into those uh, new theater spaces? Well, uh, small changes. Uh, some because, you know, the Majestic is able to do something I wouldn't be able to do on the road, which they, for instance, a small detail, but they had a TV at the front of the set, and there was things on TV all the time, baseball games. And, uh, you know, on the road, we wouldn't have 
that ability. So I wrote, rewrote the lines that had to do with what, what was on TV and, and uh, you know, the uh, dialogue between the actors as they were watching it and so forth. But um, a few things, which I'll, as we get closer to Majestic again, I'm going to show Danny and see if he wants to... Uh, to use this, to use those little changes. He might, might not, but, you know, it's his choice, and we'll see what happens. Uh, Danny, has there been any interest by other theater companies or uh, agents uh, to take the play and move it to another theater uh, with a different director and cast? Um, not that I'm aware of, although I know Stan is, has uh, been working on these, uh, these other uh, potential productions that he's talked about so um you know that'll be uh, exciting for me to to go see it in a different space and uh you know, so i'm kind of looking forward to that you know i would talk we we're talking about the ending a little a little earlier and um you know one of the things that that struck me about the ending of the play and i think and I, i'm sure it struck the audience as well um you know, here here comes this young reporter, and uh, all of a sudden he's got this book, and you know, by God, he got it done. Here's the book, you know, and so there's like some excitement there, but then that quickly, quickly turns to something else, you know, becomes something else, and I love that turnaround, you know, and and the impact of that turnaround on, on the audience, and uh, it was a great. Uh, is a great way to end it. One question I had for Stan: Why did you set it in New Haven? Um, it, it, has New Haven been a part of your life in some at some point? Or uh, I, I find it well, interesting because it's one of the few plays set in New Haven that is not Yale affiliated. Well, there were actually two reasons. One was because for many years I went out, out with a woman who lived uh, in North Haven, which is right outside New Haven. But the other reason was that originally I wrote this play for a uh, New York producer who was interested in it, and uh, he wanted the Yankees as the team, and he also you know, felt it should be set around New York to draw audiences from the metropolitan area. So that is why it ended up in New Haven. I didn't know whether in your career you had lived there or gone to school there. There was some particular right. uh, thing about it. Um, in terms of the, when you bring it back to the stage, Stan, you said you might tweak a few things. Danny, what about the direction? Do you think you'll tweak a little of that, or are you going to try to restage it as it was? No, I think it, we'd pretty much restage it as, as it was. Um, now, that would depend on uh, what Stan's new writing is, you know, and no, I mean, does it have something to well, do with it? Well, I'd run it by, yeah, I'd run it by you first, believe me. Yeah, you, yeah. Know, you make great choices, you know. Uh, Stan, since... You know, there, there's that one character who has, what, four lines in the play? Yeah, pretty. Uh, brought our, our, our production assistant out and put her in the cast uh, for that. And so I think that pretty. was uh, uh, that was a writing Stan, as, they, well, as yeah. well as the casting thing, you know, why, how can you cast right. an actor four lines? Right. <laughs> uh, Stan, as you have had this experience of seeing a play that you wrote get on the stage, um, are you going to write another play uh, or another work for the theater specifically? In it? And what what are you working on now? Uh, well, I I... I did write another play, and uh, its friends are reading it, and people like it. But to tell you the truth, the pitch is kind of uh, unique. It had a lot of things that um, would appeal to audiences and to theater directors like like Danny that I don't think this other play had. And it's it's about baseball. The lead character is seventy two. He's a blue collar kind of guy, but a really good re uh, sports reporter, and. Um, most audiences that go to theaters are older, and uh, I found as this, you know, as I watched this play with an audience, that they really um, associated with this character. And I think the fact that it was about baseball, it's very down to earth, 
And these, you know, it's hard to come up with another plot and another set of characters with, that would have the same appeal. <laughs> and I think that's the reason when Danny read it that he liked it, because he sensed those things. So there was also the, 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 the time frame, you know, of, of, uh, the, of the pitch itself, you know, back in the 60s. And, you know, our audience connected with that. And it was Yankee, Yankees, Red Sox, and our audience right, right. certainly connected with all of that. And then this great story about uh, the two reporters and, and uh, you know, the, the sort of battle the, the two of them go through in order to get this book published. Right. I, I mean, I think, I think it, uh, the f- framework, of, uh, baseball is really the peripheral part of it, or was to me, in terms of the entire thing. But seeing the two reporters and that interaction, that's where the tenseness and the drama was. Right. Um, Stan, are you going to write for other uh, genres at this point, or, or has the theater bug caught you? Um, well, the theater bug caught me in, because it actually paid. <laughs> you know, I'm retired. I worked as a newspaper reporter for 30 years. It's not a high paying job. And, uh, it's the theater. If you get something produced, it actually pays pretty well. It's some income in retirement. And then the, obviously the bigger thought, the bigger thing is, uh, that if an audience likes a play, it's just a very satisfying feeling. Now, if I wrote a play that, you know, got kind of lukewarm reaction from audiences, I would quickly, you know, lose interest in this. But, uh, you know, with the pitch, you know, this can go for many years. Uh, the actors love the play. Uh, the same actors who are at, at the Majestic will be doing uh, this tour when we get around to it. So I can really make this like my own, my second career. And even if it's only one play, that's fine with me. You okay, know, I'm uh, not Dan- ambitious at my age. <laughs> <laughs> Stan Freeman, uh, playwright, Danny Eaton, artistic director of, of The Pitch, at the, uh, was at the Majestic Theater and will return to the Majestic Theater. We've got to take a very quick break here to acknowledge the underwriters that make Arts Beat TV and radio possible. Peter Coles is our chief engineer. I'm Mark Auerbach. We'll return in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone, to Arts Beat TV and Radio. We're here every Friday at 8 a.m., both on Westfield Community Programming Channel 15 and 89.5 FM WSKB. If you missed a portion of today's program or you want to catch up on some of the previous programs, you'll find them on YouTube at WSKB Community Radio's YouTube page. Right now we're chatting with Danny Eaton, the artistic director at the Majestic Theater, and the playwright Stan Freeman, who wrote The Pitch, which had its world premiere uh, earlier this year, right before the pandemic struck. And both gentlemen are going to bring the play back when the Majestic reopens, hopefully in in January of 2021. Danny, what are the other plans that you have uh, for plays for the 2021 uh, winter and spring? Yeah, well, basically we are, uh, we're going to, as I said, pick up the pitch and just kind of, it's, it's just been post, we consider it being, having been postponed and we're just going to pick it up and, you know, relocate it to January. <laughs> And then uh, do essentially the same thing with our production of Nine to Five, which we were a week away from go- going into rehearsal with uh, when we had to close down. So those two things will be happening: the, the pitch in January, and then Nine to Five in in May. And in between, uh, we have uh, plans to do uh, Murder for Two. It's kind of a two-character musical comedy. A really fun play piece, and then my own play, uh, Betty in the Patch, which we did a reading of uh, a year or so ago, and was you know pretty well received. And so those are the four things that'll uh, come up next spring, you know, or next winter, next spring, and then we go into our twenty fifth season that I'm kind of working on planning right now. I know we're going to uh, bring back the Buddy Holly story one more time, and open the 25th season with that, and uh, uh, go from there. Man. Uh, how can people find out more information? Uh, is everything up on the website? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. 
MajesticTheater.com. And I understand that your box office is currently closed and the, and the theater shut down, I would assume. Um, how can people reach you if they uh, or ticket holders um, and stuff like that? If, if people held tickets to the pitch, will those tickets be good when the show reopens? Yes, uh, uh, that's kind of the beauty of this, in a sense. Uh, the people who are holding on to tickets, you know, you will get to see the pitch on, you know, the exact same night of the week that your original tickets were for and the exact same seats that your original tickets were for. So, you know, it's literally picking it up and moving it. And uh, uh, other than that, everything will be the same. That's great. Uh, Stan, do you think the pitch mm -hmm. might work as a film? Uh, would you ever be uh, consider running a film adaptation of it? Well, if someone... I, I actually did write a script for it, and if someone, uh, you know, had the money, wanted to make it into a film, I'd certainly talk to them. But, uh, you know, you that's a, a much more, you know, tricky road to go down, and, uh, you know, the play is really a lot of fun. So, you know, I, I, a movie, you hand your script over to someone and they make choices about it, uh, you know, in the theater, they really respect the, the, the script and, and uh, you know, it's kind of a more satisfying world than film. So, I, And I would assume yeah. if it went to the movies uh, and got filmed, that even after you wrote the script, if it were cast with name people, those name people mm. would insist on revisions to make themselves look better. So, well, from what, what I understand, it's not only actors, but producers, directors, you know, wives of the producers, you know, anyone, uh, the, the actual scriptwriter is very low on the totem pole, whereas in the theater, uh, the scriptwriter is very high on the totem pole. So that's, you know, a difference, a big difference. Uh, one of the my friends who saw the... Uh the performance at the Majestic is also in the media and said that in many newsrooms and in radio and TV, sports writers are a dying breed because they've been cut and a lot of the sports right. reporting is, is coming from either talk radio or um, you know, television, uh, cable and things like that. Uh, you profile two sports writers, one an up-and-coming one and one a veteran one. Um, do, do you think that the art of sports writing is gone, or do you think that it's something that's just changed as the medium has changed? You know, it's hard to tell. I would never, obviously, 30 years ago, you would have said newspapers will last forever because they fill a need. And, uh, you know, as the decline in newspapers has happened. I keep waiting for, you know, people to suddenly wake up and say, hey, we want that, you know, newspaper to read. We want sports reporting and so forth. And uh, it, I'm kind of, like, mystified about where this is going. But, you know, I, I personally read a paper every day, and uh, I just can't believe that, you know, 20 years from now and all this maybe settles out a little bit and the economy gets normal again, that people, the demand for for news, local news, national news to read uh, won't take over, and somehow this will find a, a form that works. Yeah. But sports writing, it's not going to die. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Have you, it, because you're a former news writer, have, has your mm -hmm. new, news consumption changed during this pandemic? Oh, yes. I find that... Uh, you know, I'm reading all the time, and, you know, in the past, you, had, you were doing things you couldn't, you know, read all day long, but, you know, I'm always checking my phone for the latest news development. I'm sure, you know, we all are. Yeah. We are. Yeah, if, if I could toss something in, too, I think uh, sports itself has, has changed. You know, it's become um, much more of a big business, and, uh, you know, those days of of the Yankees with Mantle and Maris and the Red Sox with right. the Kremsky, uh, they're, they're long gone. And um, I think, uh, you know, I think somewhat the in the interest or the passion we had for sports, for professional sports, um, you know, Tom Brady's moved on <laughs> to uh, right. wherever it is he's gone to. And, um, you know, I, I think sports has just changed, and so the writing 
uh, I think, has changed with it, you know? Right. Right. I would agree. I'm not. I'm not a regular sports reader, but I just noticed that the way it's being reported today, the industry and the business uh, is much different than it was when I saw yeah. stories as a kid. Right. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Gentlemen, we're out of time, but I want to thank both of you for being here. Danny Eaton, the Artistic Director of the Majestic Theater in West Springfield. Stan Freeman, the playwright and former uh, newspaper reporter for decades here in Springfield, who wrote the pitch, which Danny directed, which was the last show at the Majestic prior to its closing during the pandemic. Uh, the season will resume in the new year with a revival of the pitch with its original cast and staging and uh, gentlemen i hope uh, that it is a great run in 2021 